the, the ritual of Purim, by the way, that the Jews celebrate today is based on her act of saving the Jews from complete annihilation. And, uh, but, but there's a lot in this book that's that you, 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 really exciting. Let me give you a little background. By the way, we don't know who the author of Esther is. Uh, we're, 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 we just don't know. We know somebody wrote it. And we know somebody uh, wrote it that was uh, very, very familiar with Persian customs. And, uh, and so, so Mordecai, or Ezra, may, may have written the book of Esther, but we're not sure on this. Let me give you a little background on the book of Esther. The book of Esther is a graphic narrative which relates how God's people were preserved from ruin during the 5th century B.C. The book takes its name from the beautiful, and, and this is ironic because she rises to one of the highest positions in the land, but she's an orphan. She's orphaned. So the likelihood of this lady, this woman, of ever making it to the levels that she arose to uh, would probably, in most people's minds, say it could never happen. It proves that God can do anything. That was my point today. In healing, in your life, as Michael said, learn to launch out. Trust God. You've got you to gotta take a step. And a lot of people are so bound by fear, they never experience success because they're too afraid to make a move for God. And I've, I've taught on this many, many, many times. Most millionaires in America have failed over five times. See, we think, well, we don't want to fail even once. Well, that goes with the territory. In order to be successful, you're going to fail. In some areas, you're going to fail. So she was beautiful. She was orphaned Jewess, who became the queen of the Persian king Ahasuerus. We think he was uh, Xerxes. Okay, uh, the, and he, Xerxes, succeeded Darius I in four. 85 uh, B.C. He ruled over 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia. He had a huge, huge kingdom. He lived in the Persian capital of Shushan. And so a lot of Jews were in Babylon at that time. What a lot of people don't realize, when the Jews were allowed to exit Babylon, they didn't exit. They had become so conditioned to it that they stayed. And so there was a huge population, and uh, hatred arose against them, and a guy by the name of Mordecai uh, wanted, wanted to, to do them in. So that's, that's the background for this beautiful book of Esther. I call it Esther, a woman favored of God. So you moms may be going through some heavy or deep water right now, but trust God, because he can favor you as well as favoring this great woman, Esther. Now, every believer, you have to understand this, every believer, I believe, has favor from God. Why? By right of their conversion in Christ. When I started the service, <clears throat> I alluded to Jerry's healing. I would have prayed for Jerry, but I doubt very much if God would have healed him because he wasn't saved. So I figured I better get my priorities straight so the first thing I did was tell Jerry, God can heal you, but you need to give your heart to God. You need to be converted. <coughs> and he did. <coughs> he accepted Christ, and God granted him favor, and he healed him. I happen to believe that we all have favor from God by right of conversion. Now, are there certain things we go through? Yes, we do. Christ said we're going to have tribulation in this world. But God's going to give us understanding and grace to go through those times of tribulation. Now, we also, not only do, do we have favor from God, but we're going to find out that God gives us favor with man. And that is the key to success. When God gives you favor with others. So, so the ingredients in a person's life, his character, is the ingredients that make he, him, or her up, they're, they're going to be the keys 
to walking a successful and a, proper, a, a prosperous life. I'll get my words straight here. And so, <clears throat> I want you to see that, first of all, she is a true handmaiden of the Lord. Esther was a woman favored of God. First point, Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her. You see that in Esther 2.15. I'll just read it for you. <clears throat> Turn there. Follow me along. What, what shall we do to Queen... Oh, I'm into the wrong chapter. I'm into, I'm into chapter 1. We want to go to chapter 2, verse 15. I'll get it. Now, when the, when the turn came for Esther, the daughter of Abihail, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his daughter to go into the king, she requested nothing but what Haggai, the king's eunuch and custodian of the women, advised. And Esther, notice this, Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her. So she not only had favor with God, but because of her character traits, he gives her favor with everyone who looked upon her, who saw her. Now, I use her a lot because when they prepared her for marriage, and she ends up marrying the king. And, and I was raised in a church where you couldn't wear any makeup. You couldn't dye your hair. In fact, you couldn't even cut your hair. How would you like to be in that kind of a legalistic system? Couldn't cut your hair, couldn't dye your hair, couldn't wear makeup. And, that, and that's just for the women. The men, you know, with white shirts, black suits. And yet under <clears throat> Middle Eastern traits, they spent a year preparing women for marriage on how to wear perfumes, how to put on makeup, jewelry, this is, this is crazy. Religion's, religion is crazy. Where do you think jewelry came from? It came from religious people. Then religious people come along and say, you can't wear earrings, you can't wear rings. So, so it's, it's amazing how the Bible touts one thing and groups tout another. There was a good series on, I will say this, on cults this week, and uh, how crazy they are. And it's important, keep this in mind, to keep yourself out of a cult, you better be knowledgeable in the Word of God. You better read the Word of God, and you better follow the Word of God for yourself, because crazy religious people will get you killed. They will do you in. And so, so Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her, Esther 2.15. We find not only favor from God upon Esther's life, but that divine favor brought her into daily favor with those around her. You've got to pray that God will give you favor with others because your success depends on others. You, 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 if you want to be successful, that is a, a main principle of success. So, as you read the story of Esther, you immediately come to the realization of the following facts. People willingly assisted her in all of her doings. You cannot succeed alone. It's impossible. You have to have help. You have to have people who will help you climb the ladder of success. This, it's amazing how many people are involved in, in the life of this church. We're not a mega church. But it takes a lot of people to make this thing work. And it'll take a lot of people to make your life work. She seemingly received unfair advantage and was shown partiality. She was blessed by God and in turn was blessed by others. But this is really the facts of life. God does not show partiality. The Apostle Peter reveals this fact in Acts 10.34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. So the whole point of this today, moms, and this is really it's for everybody, but mainly for mothers, because we live really in an unfair society today. You know, men make babies and then they move away. They go away. And most of the heads of households, most of the raising of the children 
is left to moms, and that isn't always easy. But I'm telling you, if you want to be successful with your families, you're going to have to allow God to be a part of your life. That, that's, that's the key. That's, that's the key to Esther's life and success. What am I saying? I'm saying God will do for you what he did for Esther because he's not a partial God. He doesn't show partiality. Note the following, and the king loved Esther above all women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set a royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Now, if you read this whole book, Vashti was, was already the queen, but she was a very beautiful lady. She had everything going for her. And the king sins for her to show her off. He's proud of her. He wants his people in the court to see her. And yes, she's married to me and she's beautiful. And she tells him to take a long hike off of a short pier. She won't, she won't come. Well, that's a bad thing because he's the king. And as Mel Brooks says, it's good to be the king. Amen? It's good to be the king. And he disowns her. He takes her off of the throne. He makes, she makes him so angry, so full of pride. And the real truth was, she, her failure to submit to authority was the downfall of her. Because all of a sudden, the court would have said, and all, the, all the, the vassal kings and the subordinates would have said, we don't have to submit to his authority. His own wife doesn't submit to his authority. So they set something into motion here. He dethrones her. He takes her off of the throne. And he says, find me another queen. Now this unlikely candidate, this orphan, that in a sense was a nobody, rises to be the queen over Persia. So God will do for you what he did for Esther. God has crowned every believer with favor. You have favor out there. We have alternatives. We can, the songs that I chose today, Michael, let the shoreline go. We can cling to the shoreline. I, I told this story. It's a true story. I was on Big Bear Lake. At one time, Big Bear Lake was great fishing. You could get big crappie and bluegill and, and bass and trout, and, and we went up there a lot. And I was in the boat with my dad and a friend, and we were catching fish, man. We were pulling them in left and right. But the sun was going down. And my dad said, we better head back because the docks, they, they, they're lit up for a while, but then they eventually turn the lights off of them. And all around the lake, they have uh, cattails and reeds. You, you see that around the lake? Well, I, I, I was pretty convincing, so I convinced my dad to stay out too long to keep fishing. Well, the sun went down. Well, we couldn't find the dock. And so it was like 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock and 10.30. Got later and later and later and later, blah, 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 up around the lake. And I remember saying to my dad, I've had it. I'm going over the side. I'm swimming in. <laughs> and my dad said, no, you're not. I said, no, I'm going over. Well, to tell you the truth about it, I was, I was really, and this is why we're, we do dumb things. I was in the safest place you could possibly be. I was in a boat, dry as dry could be. If I had to stay there all night long, it would, would have been smarter. And, and I knew, I don't know why I wasn't thinking, but if the minute I got into the reeds, I couldn't have got to the bank. I would have just drowned it. Because those reeds are tall. Those, those things grow big. And my dad said, wait a minute. I, and it had to be the Lord, because he knew how stupid I was. My dad sees this one little light way, way out 
across the lake. He said, well, I'm going to head for that light. So I said, okay, but I'm, I'm ready to go over the side, Dad. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of riding in this boat. We've been in the boat for hours. And believe it or not, when we got to that light, it was the very dock that we had come out of. Now, if that wasn't God, I, I, I don't know. So, so God gives us favor. We all have favor. But we got to listen to God. we got to do what God tells us to do the way He wants it done. And when, when we do crazy things like I was going to do, then we get into trouble. And, and the whole point is, the sh we, we want to cling to the shoreline. It can be the unsafest place in the whole world. Let the shoreline go, folks. Get out into the deep. That's where the fishing is. <laughs> That's where the freedom is. And so I, I never forgot that. And I, I thank God that he didn't let me go over the side because I wouldn't be here now. And Jay wouldn't be here. And Charlene wouldn't be here. You'd be in Idaho married to some old tobacco chewing hick. <laughs> God has crowned every believer with favor. His word clearly states, we are to have grace and favor. When your co-workers or your family or your friends or even strangers see God's favor on your life, they will want to serve the same God you serve. I, I really believe that tribulation, and I don't like it, and trial and sickness can serve a tremendous and make a tremendous point in a person's life. When you're healed of a catastrophic disease, that gives hope to everyone that is around you and everyone that knows you. Now, we don't like to get catastrophic diseases, but if we would let our faith kick in, if we would pray the way we're supposed to pray, if we would receive prayer the way we're supposed to receive it, and God heals you, then the word goes out. When God brings you from poverty to great blessings, the word goes out. So it has a purpose. It serves a need. It's like a bright light going on. It's like a flag being run up, a flag of victory, that there's hope. And if anybody should have hope, we should have hope. We, we should be full of trust and faith and belief. So praising God and having favor with all people Notice this in Acts 2, 4, 7. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So it didn't end with the Old Testament. They, favor carries over unto God's people. Now, if you don't get anything out of the message, ladies, get this. Projection equals attraction. I said this the other Wednesday night I was teaching on ministry. And I said visibility brings credibility. Without visibility, you're not going to have any credibility. And so, projection equals attraction. When you, t why do we testify? We're projecting ourselves. We're saying, God healed me. God blessed me. I, I, I was broke and he gave me money. I needed a job and he gave me a job. I went into business and he blessed me. You're projecting. That's what testimony is. It's projecting, and it attracts people. And, and I've said this over and over. The dumbest thing the church ever, ever did was stop allowing people to testify. Because when you testify, you project and you attract. It's a sowing and reaping principle. God healed me. Wow, maybe God will heal me. If God healed him... Will God heal me? Yes. But we don't let people tell it. Tell it. Well, no, no, you, it's too long. People are going to get bored. Sometimes I think we need to just have whole testimony uh, and prayer services. People testify about what is, God has done for them, and then people in that category come up and get prayed for. Amen? So, when we project a loving and caring spirit to those that are around us, we attract people. They, they want to know us. They want to get to know us. 
when we show concern and genuine interest to those with whom you come into contact, you attract people. And that's a good thing. That isn't a bad thing. Make a conscious effort to be friendly to others. That's what we're about. We're to let a, we, you can put it any way you want to. I'll, I'll spiritualize it for you. Let your light shine. Amen? That, you know, I'll, sometimes you've got to spiritualize with spiritual people. You know, the God told me crowd. You know, so, so but it, being friendly to others, extending yourself, that's letting your light shine. Esther obtained favor in the sight of everyone who looked upon her. Because she was mean? No, because she was good. She was loving. She was kind. She was sincere. We look on the outer beauty of Esther when the inner beauty of this maiden of God was the secret of her success. Bashti was beautiful. So beautiful, he wanted to brag on her. She was ugly on the inside. And she lost her crown. Esther was, I'm sure, beautiful, but she was really beautiful on the inside. That's, that's the key to success. Be more beautiful on the inside than you are on the outside. This is what, what amazes me, and we all do this. I, I understand men are spending more uh, on uh, beauty products now than even women. We, we think... We think like Hollywood. We think like uh, publicity agents. Oh, if I look really good on the outside, and it's like, you've got to be beautiful on the inside. Because one of these days, you're not going to have enough money to buy stuff that make you look good on the outside. Because things start sagging and hitting the floor, and you ain't even... The... <laughs> Amen? <laughs> and the greatest plastic surgeon in the world says... I surrender, I give up. Ain't no hope. <laughs> I get a kick out of, like, uh, who's that guy that married the Kardashian woman, the old lady? Bruce Jenner. He looks like his face has been Simonized. Seriously, you ever see this guy? I mean, he spent money on this. It's like, it's like, I've said this before, but like, I think young guys do this just to irritate old guys. They go into a barber shop and they go, do this to my hair and I'll give you 25 bucks. And they walk out and you look and you go, oh my God. And they paid for it. I would have done it for free. Just to, just would have been fun just to mess their hair, hair up and, you know, like, I get a kick out of guys like Fred Rogan, right? I mean, he's like, He's been on TV now. He's probably about 88 years old. And then he thinks he's got to comb his hair all this crazy way, right? There's going to come a time, and, I, and this is my advice to you ladies today, groom on the inside much more than grooming on the outside. Because there's going to come a time that you could do anything and everything to the outside, but if you're ugly, if you're ugly on the inside... You'll never be a success. Can't. Doesn't work that way. Now, I wrote this down. Let us make daily declaration. Tony, Tony testified last Wednesday. Martin, some money came through for Martin. But I had advised the church to 28, 1 through, he did 1 through 25. I said 1 through 14. Every morning, if I, if I was struggling financially every morning, I would get up, I'd open up Deuteronomy 28, I'd go uh, 1 through 14, and I would stand on it until it becomes a reality in my life. See, we say, well, I did that 10 times and it didn't work. Well, you, what, what if you get to heaven and God said, you know what, if you'd have done it 11 times, I would have given it to you. We need to personalize and make God's favor a part of our daily living patterns. Say this with me, especially ladies. I have God's favor upon my life. 
And that will attract people who will willingly assist me in whatever I do or wherever I go. So you got favor. You don't have to ask God for favor. You already have it. But you have to start addressing the inner you. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be, I'm going to be ex, uh, especially nice. Say this with me. God will honor me and open the people's minds and hearts. He will cause the people with whom I come into contact to deal favorably and graciously with me. Wouldn't that be a good thing? To have the favor of your bosses? To have the pay favor of your family? Say this with me. God's favor will help me win life's battles and obtain success in my life. And who doesn't want success? Say this with me. Because of God's favor on my life, I will be obedient to Luke 6.38. Now, now, some of you are going to say, oh, well, he's just saying that because he wants money. I'm not going to ask you for money. I, I'm trying to get you to understand God's principles. When you act upon God's principles, they work. And if you're sitting out there today, and, and I say this all the time, you may say, well, I'm all, it'd be like this. <clears throat> Let's say you took in $50,000 this year. Would you turn down 100? No, you wouldn't. Let's say you took in $100,000 this year. Would you turn, turn down a million? Well, what fool would say, well, I got 100,000, so I'm happy. And you get to heaven and God says, he, not, God's not going to say this. He's going to have somebody like me up there that's going to say this to you. You're an idiot. You could have taken in a million. I, I never understand. That's illogical to me. Like there's some level. As far as I'm concerned, there ain't no level. If God gives me two million, I, I wouldn't turn down four or eight. And yet we got people, they're not getting this. This is why I said this, and I'll read it again for you. Because of God's favor on my life, I will be obedient to Luke 6.38. This is your problem. I don't have no money. I'm, I never have enough money. I go in the hole, blah, blah, blah. This is your problem. Listen to me today. This is your problem. Well, I'm, I got 100,000. I got 200,000. You could have 2 million. And if you come to me and go, well, I only want 100000 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think you're an idiot. Because <laughs> I don't know anybody that doesn't want more. Why? Why would I want more? To bless others. To bless your family. And this is why I said what I said. Say it with me, ladies. I will give... And it will be given unto me. Get it? You got to give in order to get more. You can lock yourself, you can lock yourself into the shoreline. Let the shoreline go. These are not just songs. When, I, when I'm getting a message or something, I try to pick songs that go, launch out into the deep. Let the shoreline go. Because you can't do anything with the shoreline. It's mucky, it's dirty, it's muddy. The mosquitoes hang out there. Get out where the full tide flows. Say this with me. Now we're talking about Luke 6.38. I will give and it will be given unto me. Say this, good measure, pressed down, shaken, together, running over, will be put into my bosom. 
It works. Believe me, it works. Say this with me. For with the same measure that I use it, it will be measured back to me. Everybody laughs at me. I love, I'm telling you, I love the cartoons. What does that remind you of? And I've, I've done it five times. Daffy Duck. It's mine, it's mine, it's all mine. And he's always broke. He's always busted. There, there's more of a moral story in those cartoons than people realize. You know, oh, woe is me. Oh, woe is me. Everything happens to me. That reminds me of some Christians. I mean, I mean, you could watch those cartoons and see Gluttony Illustrated, Greed Illustrated, Pride Illustrated. I love, I love the bulldog. And he beats the living daylight. Was it, is it a cat that he's always beating out on? He tells him the cat, that's like some Christians, go out and get me a steak and don't forget the gravy. They preach. Those cartoons preach. <laughs> you know, my son's back here. I'm going to close with, it, with this, you know. And uh, he used to, he's, now he's over this big, huge union, so he's, he's like uh, Esther. He's been elevated. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he took after me, so he's real good looking. <laughs> he has more hair than I do. About how long, I don't know. And he was delivering one day, and uh, who, it was uh, the, the guy that drew Bugs Bunny. Who was it, Jay? Yeah, Frizz Freeling. Remember Frizz Freeling? See, we think success goes on forever. See, here's, the, here's the deal. And we see him. He drew all these cartoons, and it was great. And Jay knocked on the door, and he said, he came to the door. And Jay said, you're Frizz Freeling. And he said, Yeah. And Jay told him, I really enjoy all your cartoons and you was work director and all this. And it was a sad day for Frizz because they were moving him out of his beautiful home and putting him into an assisted living. And here's the point. The, the, the point is you can have all of these degrees, all these accolades, all these uh, things, and they're going to come to an end. Someday they're going to come to an end. So he invited Jay into his house and he showed him his Oscar had an Oscar for one of his um, cartoons. And then Jay said, well, he had to go, and he said, could I have your autograph? He said, oh, I can do better than that. So he drew Bugs Bunny for Jay, and he, and he signed it. And, and, and that was really nice, and, and the point is, obviously, he was nice on the inside. He had, he had all this stuff. He had a beautiful home. He had the Oscars, all the awards. But... By being nice on the, why, you say, well, how do you know he was nice? He wouldn't have invited Jay in. He wouldn't have draw, drawn him a picture of Bugs Bunny. He wouldn't have signed it. The point is, it pays, ladies, it pays. I'm going to say it one more time. To spend time, energy, and money and grooming the inside much more than the outside. Because someday it's all going to end. Someday the degrees on the wall will fade. Someday. We will, I won't be standing behind. I'll be too old to do that. We're all going to reach that. <laughs> yeah. And so what I just described to you is the results of favor. You've got to do something in order to be granted and receive and walk in favor. And so it was when the king saw Esther, the queen, standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight. Then the king said, then said the king to her, what is thy request? The, the, see, God had a purpose. The ultimate purpose was to use Esther to save the Jewish nation. Everybody else would have said, well, she was beautiful. And today it would be sexy. 
No. God had a divine purpose. And she came through for him. And she it was the instrument that saved her people. Then said the king unto her, What is thy request? I shall gladly give thee even half of the kingdom. Esther 5, 2 and 3. What, what is the moral of the story? She moved from a, being a pauper, a pauper to a queen, an orphan to a queen. Jesus says this, men shall give unto your bosom. Luke 6, 38. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so they lent into them such things as required, and they spoil the Egyptians. Robert did a great series one time. This is taken from when the, when the Israelites fled Egypt. Now, they were slaves. They had nothing. And God said, it's time for you to go. And Moses deals with the Pharaoh along with Aaron. And you all know the story, the plagues and on and blah, 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 blah. And finally, after the death angel passes over, he says, I'm going to let your people go. But they didn't go out of there broke. They didn't leave as slaves. They didn't leave as paupers. They spoiled the Egyptians. They loaded their carts, their animals. Where do you think they got all the gold and all the materials when God said, I want you to build me a wilderness tabernacle? They spoiled the Egyptians. That was Egyptian gold, Egyptian thread, Egyptian cloth. The unrighteous treasure has been laid up in store for the righteous. That's us. But do you pray that way? Do you act that way? Do, do you say this principle, I can make this principle work for me? They work. They work. If we wouldn't eat the garbage we eat and eat what God told us to eat according to the Bible, cancer would probably be unknown. I, I'm not... I'm not Please don't get upset with me because you say, well, my loved one is struggling with cancer. I'm just making a point. If we would be, be beautiful on the inside, we would have so much greater success. If we would give. He who lends to the poor is wise. It's true. Well, I, 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 religion is boring. Not if you do it God's way. Find a field and sow in it. You know, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have that sign made up. Enter to worship, enter to praise, exit to serve. We come in here and worship God. We exit to serve God. Out there is where we serve. Out there is where we pray. Lay hands on the sick. <clears throat> We go to restaurants, we can't even hardly go there anymore because they know who we are and we brought their needs to you. You prayed and God healed them. And they want to talk about it when we go. We can't eat. So we, and then we change restaurants and then we can't keep our mouth shut. First thing you know, Charlene tells you, yeah, we're pastors. Oh, you're pastors. Blah, blah, blah. No, no, I do that. We both do. So we go to another restaurant, and within a week or two or a month, they all know, and, well, would you pray with this, that, that, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's where we serve out there. How can you give to the poor if you only have enough money for yourself to live on? You can't. That's illogical. So obviously, I'm not saying I want money, 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 money. You know, it's mine, it's mine, it's all mine. I can bless people, you can bless people. 
That's what it's about. You know, it's a small thing. Charlene did it. This guy, uh, my, my, my body fender guy, like, just to paint your car, he wants $5,000. Just to paint it. So she asked me the other day on this car, she said, would you paint that car for $3,000? He said, will you go back a long ways with us? He likes our spirit. He says, yes, I will. So he put a $5,000 paint job on a car for $3,000. That's favor. He didn't have to do that. That's favor. You say, well, I think $3,000 is a lot of money for a paint job. Oh, I don't know. I have, a, I have a saying to Charlene all the time. It's just money. It's just money, folks. That's all it is. You're going to die and leave it. And like, the, like, the, like the sign tells me, I never saw a hearse go to the graveyard with a U-Haul trailer tied on the back. I don't get it. I do not get it. Money's to be used. Money's to be enjoyed. Money's to be given away. Money is to help other people. And the more I get, the more I can help. It's that simple. It's just that simple. One last declaration, and then I'm going to turn it over to Charlene. Say it with me, ladies. I believe I have been given favor by God. And in Jesus' name, I claim all that this favor of God entitles me. Okay, I'll say it again. I claim all that this favor of God entitles me. You're entitled to pray for the sick. And they shall be healed. Not just me, you. Say it with me. People in Jesus' name will open their hearts to me. As I purpose in my heart to only do good to others. Say this. I will this day, and for his glory, project love and graciousness to everyone with whom I come in contact. And finally, and for those who would formerly have been at odds with me and my enemy, will now be my friend and bestow good gifts upon me. I'm trading my song.